On this episode of Hackbyte, we're going to learn how to reverse engineer an Android app to discover potential exploits. In an earlier episode, we learned about how Android Studio can be used to create a virtual device that makes it easy and affordable to learn and practice with Android hacking. We then installed a purposefully exploitable app called Diva onto the virtual phone to make it even easier to practice with. If you aren't familiar with Android Studio, Diva, or you just want a quick refresher, I recommend you go back and watch that video before continuing here with part two. In part two, we're going to explore a few more exploits that are included with Diva. However, these challenges are slightly more complicated than the insecure logging bug that we covered in the previous episode. The challenges covered today will require us to actually dig inside of the Diva source code. And in order to do that, we're going to continue to install some reverse engineering software called Jodex. After Jodex is installed, we can roughly convert the unreadable APK file into a collection of more human understandable Java classes. Then I'll show you guys how to interpret the Java code and show off some red flags to look out for to try to discover an exploit. When looking at the code, we may even be able to discover passwords or API tokens that developers forgot to encrypt before including it in the code. In order to follow this guide, you will need Android Studio installed on the computer capable of running a virtual device. The virtual device will also need Diva installed, but that process is detailed in the introduction video. After that is all ready, we can begin. So like I said, this tutorial is going to be picking up from the first part of this video series on exploiting virtual Android devices. And so in that video, we installed this Android Studio and we created a virtual instance of an Android virtual device that we could use on our computer. And then the other thing we did in that video is we went ahead and installed this Diva app that is purposely has some vulnerabilities built into it. And so I just want to limit the scope of this Diva app. So this isn't, and this like tutorial series in general, this isn't really showing off vulnerabilities in Android, but it's more showing off vulnerabilities that could exist in different Android apps. So that's a pretty big distinction. So this is more focusing on apps that weren't coded up to snuff, and then there could be certain issues wrong with it. So last time we briefly went over the insecure logging issue, where sometimes when something happens in an app, it's going, like, especially if an error happens, it's going to log that error and sometimes details that shouldn't be included in that log are displayed. And that was in the last video. This time we're gonna do something a little more advanced and we're gonna be showing off hard coding issues. So in case you don't know, a hard coding issue is something that arises when a programmer has a false sense of security about what users of their app can see and what they can't see. So someone making an app, they're writing all this code and if there's a certain password for this or often this comes in the form of API tokens, though they might, if they're lazy, just store the API token in plain text in their code and think they're safe because they only think that the user can see the GUI that that code generates. However, we have a couple of tricks up our sleeve and we do have ways of actually seeing the code that's actually making this GUI work. And so how we're gonna do that is that we're going to have to have access to the actual APK file that is um, running this app. And uh, we should still have the, um, the uh, diva.apk file uh, that we downloaded to actually install it onto the virtual device. So we're going to need this APK. And if we double click it, Windows isn't really going to know what to do with it. So we won't really be able to see it. Like, let's see what happens if I open it in Notepad. Yeah, it's just giving me uh, a bunch of encoded stuff that I have no way of understanding. Like I see a file name right there, androidmanifest.xml, but Notepad does not know how to decode this APK file. So we're going to have to download some special software that actually can decode this APK file so we can see what's inside. And so the tool we're going to use to do that is called Jodex. And Jodex is a neat little piece of reverse engineering software that can take an APK file, decode the DEX files, and then we can see the Java source code that the APK file is running on. And what's really handy about Jodex, what I really like about it, is that it has a, a GUI version um, that's super easy to install, even on Windows. Because uh, if, if you're familiar with like cybersecurity tools, often they're not Windows friendly. Getting them to run on Windows, like even if you can get them to run on Windows, it's normally not the best experience, but Jodex is super easy to install, even if you're using Windows like a plebeian, like I am. So to go ahead and install it, we can go ahead and go to this download header and download the release from GitHub. And then since I'm on Windows, I'm going to download Jodex GUI. I'm uh, going to download it without JRE, and you would only download it with JRE if you don't have Java installed on your computer. All JRE stands for is Java Runtime Environment. So I'm downloading it without JRE, Again, if you don't have 
Java installed, then install it with JRE. I'm just gonna go ahead and save that to a secure file. And I'll just save this exe, exe file and then I'll be able to run Jotix straight from there. And then we're just gonna tell Windows, hey, I actually do trust this publisher. And then if you give it a second, Jotix is gonna open up and it's going to ask you to select an APK file that you want to reverse engineer. So you can actually go take a look at the source code. Like I was saying, we're going to go ahead and use the diva beta that APK. We're gonna open this file. It's gonna take a second to parse all the stuff. And then there you go. Now, all of a sudden we can see all of the source code for the diva app. So there's all these different Java classes and Java packages. And now we can go ahead and look, these are the code that is driving all the different modules built inside of the Diva app. So I'm gonna just keep them open. Oops, I'm gonna keep them open side by side so we can go and compare. So it's a little straightforward here. So we're looking for hard coding issues part one. We're looking for any any Java class that might be related to Java is hard coding issues part one. And hey, would you look at that? Hard coding issues part one. So now normally in this case, we're, we're just going to be, we already know it's a hard coding issue. So I'm gonna be looking for some kind of password to get in here. So like right now, if I have just a guess of a password, so I'll type in guess, it's not gonna work. And I don't know if you can read that, but it's giving me a very mean uh, error message saying that it's going to see me in hell. But I'm gonna go ahead and look in the code and see if the developer was lazy uh, and actually stored the password in the code. And so um, I don't even need to know much Java and you probably wouldn't even need to know either. But basically I see this text and it's saying if the text um, is equal to this string, which is vendor secret key, then it's going to give us access into the app. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, swoop that password from here and type in vendor secret key. And let's see if it gives me access. And hey, would you look at that? Uh, again, it might be hard to read, but it did give me a successful message. And obviously this is just a contrived example, but I hope this like, gives you some familiarity with one, being able to look at some source code and to understand hard coding issues. So let's go ahead and continue down the list and we're gonna go to number three, insecure data storage part one. And if we go ahead and read the objective, it's just find out where or how their credentials are being stored and the vulnerable code associated with it. So this is very similar to what we just did where some credentials, in that case, the password to access, um, access this vendor key was directly stored inside of the code as plain text. So you're not always gonna find this. Uh, I think most people are smart enough now not to keep passwords or API tokens or vendor keys directly inside um, inside of their uh, code. It's like a string variable. So in this case, it's actually, we're gonna have to put in a username and password and somewhere, somehow, the software is saving that and we're gonna have to find out where we're saving it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and create a username and password. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Nick as my username and the password will be hack5. I'm gonna save it and it says here, third party credentials have been saved successfully. And so uh, now we can go ahead and dig into the code again really quickly. And we're doing insecure data storage number one. And we're just going to see maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll get lucky, but uh, I don't think if it's dynamically creating the um, username and password, it's unlikely to be hard coded into the text. Uh, by definition, it can't be hard coded. So we're gonna see if this gives us any clues. And so we're seeing that it's uh, taking our input and it's putting it as a username and password. It's converting it to string and it's committing it but uh, I don't know anything about where it's being committed. So this has only been helpful in letting us know that we can't find anything directly from here. So from here, let's just go ahead and dig into the file structure that is built into this virtual device. So to do that, we're gonna have to open up a terminal and use the Android debug bridge. I'm gonna go ahead and use PowerShell. Of course, if you're not on Windows, you can use your Unix-based terminal um, that I'm sure is much nicer than PowerShell. But for this case, we're just gonna use uh, Android debug bridge and we're going to create a shell using the command adb uh, space shell. And this is gonna give us a command line interface into the internal files that are uh, on the virtual device. So I'm going to go ahead and do an ls and I can see all these different uh, directories that are on the phone. And I'll go ahead and tell you that most of the app data is saved in the data slash data folder. And I'm gonna go ahead here and we're going to see a lot of different 
directories. And then if I really quickly want to limit it to uh, just stuff that's related to Diva, I'm just going to do ls. I'm going to pipe. So this ls uh, is the command we just did. It just lists all the different things in this folder. So I'm going to do an ls. I'm going to use this pipe character which basically uh, pipes the output of this command and it's going to bring it into a different command. And that command is going to be grep diva. So grep, all grep does is it searches for this string. So any line that is outputted into the terminal that contains the string diva will be uh, printed for us. So it's just gonna filter out anything that does not contain the word diva. And so it did find one folder, Jakara sum diva, and this is the directory where our relevant files will probably be stored. And I'm, I just did another ls in this Jakar SM Diva uh, folder. And I can see there's one directory that's sticking out. Let me list it in this format. And that's the shared prefs directory. So let's go ahead and change directories into shared prefs. And like one more time, let me control L. Oops, that's not working. Sorry about that. So I'm in the shared preps directory and let's do one more ls and see what's in here. And so there's this XML file. It's a nice file structure to store stuff uh, like usernames and passwords. Obviously, if you're storing your users' usernames and passwords, you're going to want to encrypt that file and definitely not leave it as plain text. So I'm going to go ahead and try to just open this with the cat and uh, hopefully it's encrypted and hopefully I can't see it. But um, unfortunately, no, it's only encoded and it's encoded in ETF8. Um, and we can go ahead and see uh, the username I inputted and uh, the password. And this uh, notes pin, this is actually from a different challenge that I was doing off camera. But uh, there you go. I was able to snoop around in the file structure and see that it was saving the username and password as plain text in an XML file. And so I hope this just reminds you that if you are trusted with storing user credentials, First, check your server should never even like be able to see the plain text. And if you do have to store it somehow, it should definitely be encrypted in a fashion where you don't even have the methods of unlocking it. So yeah, bad way to store stuff. And it surprisingly still happens in 2021. So uh, look out for it and you may be able to uh, find a bug bounty. While some of these examples may seem a little bit simplistic to actually incur in a real app, one, you'd be surprised what is able to pass through quality assurance, and two, these Diva examples are just enough of a challenge to force you to learn the fundamental skills of discovering bugs. Continuing down this path and practicing the skills you learned here in order to beat these challenges can help lead to a well-paying hobby in collecting bug bounties. Watch out for the next part of the series where we'll explore some more of the challenges included in the Diva app. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.